Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today it's time for album number 9 from Croftwork, Electric Cafe, or Technopop, depending on which version you have. Okay, it's time for a bit of a time skip. Croftwork had released 5 albums in a row that were super ahead of their time and continually topping themselves technologically. And they followed with what might arguably be their most influential album, Computer World, with a hiatus. Album 9, Electric Cafe, wasn't released until five years later, and aside from the Tour de France single, they basically just went quiet that whole time. It was kind of weird that they had gone silent at this particular time because it was the 80s. This was the era that Croftwork defined. It was the rise of synthesizer music and the world had been introduced to the likes of Depeche Mode and New Order and all those guys already. But by the same token, I think that was also kind of the problem. In the 70s, Nobody sounded like Croftwork. Not even fellow synth innovators like Jean-Michel Jarre and Tangerine Dream. Croftwork were constantly defining the future, but by 1986, the rest of the music world had kind of caught up with them. Everyone was already trying to sound like them, so I guess it probably shouldn't have come as much of a surprise that Electro Cafe was not particularly innovative or game-changing. When the rest of the music world has already caught on to your tricks, you're not quite as impressive anymore. So that's the historical context, at least, but my personal history with this album is a little different. See, as I've mentioned in several of my other Croftwork reviews, iTunes availability, when I was little, was seriously limited. But Electric Cafe was always there. It, along with Computer World, was the only album from Croftwork in which I'd heard everything from prior to hearing any remade versions. I'd already heard the whole thing before I was done with sixth grade, and I had no idea what the historical context was. I was just curious why no, no one seemed to like this album as much as some of their other ones. Point is, I have a built-in nostalgia factor for this one and personal enjoyment, so I was automatically inclined to give this one a pass and be nicer to it than most. I mean, it, it did get played a lot in my middle school days, too, but I also had a longer time away from it to let it, you know, to let the overplay wear off. And going back into it, while I was initially unimpressed, uh, no, I still think this album is better than most people give it credit for. Now, yeah, I did say it was a letdown initially, and I think the main problem is that uh, this might be the only Croftwork album to kind of screw up its opening. Boing Boom Chuck, I want to make it clear, is not a bad track at all. I rarely skip over it, and it has benefited enormously from being the intro to Music Nonstop and later remade versions of this track. I just want to make it clear, because from my Computer World review, people didn't seem to realize that just because I criticize tracks and pick a least favorite doesn't mean that I don't like those tracks. Like, I still like more fun to compute. But y you do also have to take Boing Boom Chuck into context. Croftwork album openers have always been fantastic. You got Autobahn, Radioactivity, Europe Endless, The Robots, Computer World. These are all amazing tracks that really hook you into the album you're about to listen to, or in Autobahn's case, be the, the main reason you're listening to the album in the first place. Hell, even in their early days, on their first two albums, the first track was also easily the best one, and on Ralph and Florian, well, okay, it might not be an amazing opener, but it did definitely hook you in. Boing Boom Chuck, though, again, this is a good song, but it's just kind of... Silly. This is a really tough track to take seriously, even as a kid. While I liked it and the way it sounded, I did kind of feel like it was kind of a joke. Yeah, I mean, it sounds cool and it's catchy, but you do still have to take into account the fact that you're starting out an album which broke a hiatus from several legendary albums with a track that's mostly a computerized voice repeatedly reading off German Batman sound effects. Boing, ping, boom, chuck. Ping, boing, boom, chuck, ping. Also with a kind of mediocre synth melody thrown in in certain parts that I'm not crazy about. I mean, I'm not gonna pretend like Electric Cafe is a particularly serious album, it's really not, but the rest of this album isn't this silly. <laughs> not a great first impression is my point. Especially for old fans going into this for the first time. Even for me, going through all these Croftwork albums for my reviews and then hearing this 
was definitely jarring to say the least. But then you go from an okay track, which is just kind of silly, to a track which is probably in my top five favorite Kraftwerk songs. Technopop was actually my first impression of this album. I just saw it on iTunes, I thought the title was cool, and the iTunes preview was interesting, and I still absolutely love the track to this day. Where, where to even start? Is this big, lo is this big long seven-minute piece that has kind of slow, plotting, metallic percussion that sounds like touching silverware together, accompanied by xylophone melodies and grand synth strings? <laughs> And as the lyrics themselves say, industrial rhythms all around. Lots of metallic noises playing the main melody. <laughs> Generated voices talking in English and Spanish, and it just wanders around from sound to sound, and it's really fascinating and catchy at the same time. It's like you started tapping out rhythms at a fancy dinner table and ended up turning into a mini symphony or something. <laughs> While this track, I think, made for a much better first impression to the album overall, I don't think you could just cut this track out and place it at the beginning, mainly because the first three tracks on this album flowed together as one mini-suite, all going at the same tempo, and this is the kind of middle section of that suite. But the parts that became more of a live staple and more iconic single was the third section, music, non-stop. I will admit this track is kind of silly too. The main draw of this track is this catchy melody played on repetitive samples of some generated voice saying the word pop over and over. And you got this pretty repetitive but punchy and very 80s beat running throughout with other generated voices saying the title or techno pop and everything just comes and goes as it pleases just kind of seems to ramble on without much of a defined structure but it's still a really fun track to listen to these tracks as kind of odd and abstract as they may be fit together pretty well and do make for a highly enjoyable listening experience now on the second side they bring up the tempo some more it's a little faster and while everything does still sound very 80s, extremely 80s, all three tracks are still really fun too. Well, either three or four tracks, depending on what version you have. The remastered version I'm uh, gonna have to link from Spotify, which also has the album's original title, Technopop, also separates the first track on the second side into two tracks, uh, The Telephone Call and House Phone. But the version I'm used to, it's just one track, The Telephone Call. And, yeah, I, I, I definitely prefer the original. <laughs> the first half of the track, which is presented as the entire track on the remaster version, is this really catchy old 80 synth pop tune uh, with a tiny hint of classical influence on there. And, of course, pl involving plenty of phone sound effects. And, yeah, I love it. I give you my affection and I give you my time Try to get a connection on the telephone line do 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 now, House Phone is kind of similar to the very beginning of this track, mostly just the same beat and lots of phone sound effects coming and going. And this is also true for the second half of the original version. And uh, while House Phone is longer, I still prefer the original in this case. First of all, because it brings in like this proto acid house bass line in there. And, uh, in the remastered version, you do also have a silence in between the telephone call and techno pop. And, you know, it, it kind of kills the momentum. It works much better as one track, if you ask me. But regardless of what version you have, this is still a fantastic track. And Sex Object is structured kind of similarly, starting out with this catchy 80s tune with lots of synth strings. Do, 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 do. And then featuring long stretches of the beat by itself while generated and maybe also sampled voices saying yes or no, 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 or maybe. 
perhaps. Or any of those kinds of words, just in different languages too. Weird track, but it's some good fun. And Electric Cafe is our closer. It's a more simplistic track. Again, really 80s bass line and voice synths. Uh, 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 uh. And mostly French lyrics about electronic music and art in the Atomic Age. Uh, Cold War hadn't quite ended yet, I guess. But I like its dark and foreboding sound and the vocoders that say the title. Electric Cafe! And especially those weird synth effects at the beginning that come back occasionally, I guess sort of Im imitating a drink machine or something. Maybe not the most impactful of closers, but I don't think any of the other tracks on here would have really worked better. <laughs> so, yeah. Overall, on Electric Cafe, it's definitely not perfect by any stretch. As I've made clear, it is, while it is kind of a more abstract and artistic take on the typical lady sound, it is still the kind of thing that makes you think, yep, that sounds like the 80s. But you know what? I'm still glad it exists. Because it, it just kind of brings some levity to the serious nature of most of Kraftwerk's music. This is not a particularly deep album, but I like having this one Kraftwerk album where you don't really have to think hard about any overarching concepts or being way ahead of its time. It's just an album that sounds great and is a lot of fun to listen to. I know it was probably a disappointment to most fans at the time, but I sure didn't know any better as a sixth grader. I just thought it sounded really cool. I even did a little music session the following summer inspired by it, but nobody cares. But the point is, Ein Electric Cafe, while not the kind of thing that you can say, oh, this is objectively a classic album and that changed everything, I still place it as one of my favorite albums from Kraftwerk. I still recommend it to any fans of the band if they haven't heard it already, and it's an underrated gem if you ask me. I'm overall feeling a solid 8 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. I'm